Well, my dream has come true. I always, I'm a, and I'm serious, I always wanted to be introduced by Howard Stringer. <laughs> serious? Serious, serious. Howard, um, as many of you know, ran CBS News. He went on to run all of CBS, and then he went on to run all of Sony, and he proves that you can be a wonderful, lovely human being and still be a strong, effective leader. And that's an important thing to know. When he mentioned the plane, and I said, oh God, you're not gonna tell the plane story. I did a story on him when he was running Sony. And we flew across the country and slept together. That's what I thought he was gonna tell, you know, side by side. He's, my, he's obviously much more discreet than I am. I don't think he heard me. They've taken him off somewhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> I get, I get the Lizzie. And this has layers of meaning for me, starting with the fact that it's named after Liz Smith, who was my girlfriend who stood for so many wonderful things, generosity, friendship, kindness, and humor, humor potty-mouthed as she was. And you all know that. Liz gave her a heart and soul and elbow grease to this organization. I went to see a class just last week, um, and it really is something special to go up and watch what, these, what this organization does, you should all go visit a class if you can. The one I went to was a group of very young mothers, all from Fuji, China, and they were learning to read English so they could read books to their children. It was terrific. And I know that the, I know that the people I met are in the room somewhere. I don't know where you are but thank you very much for letting me join the class. Uh, Liz looked upon this organization as her child. She gave birth to it. She nursed it to life. And what better achievement for a human being than to start something that teaches adults to read. I miss her, we all miss her. I miss her salty Texas twang. And a lot of her very close friends are here tonight, and they're my friends too. And I want to thank you all for coming and being here tonight. Uh, it really means a lot to me. So, speaking of my mother, <laughs> I remember my mother, Dolly, that was her name, desperately wanting me to have a career and telling me over and over again in her dreaded, I'm telling you, dreaded lectury voice, that reading would be the key for any, whatever profession I chose. Reading, meaning knowledge, will give you confidence, she said. And I grew up to tell my own daughter exactly the same thing. I was with a young mother the other day who said that she reads everything on her iPhone. I thought she meant she reads the news on her iPhone. But no, she reads everything on her phone, including books. She has an eight-year-old son, and she told me that she is worried sick because he sees her constantly buried in her phone. She's writing emails, checking the news, reading long books, and experiencing friendship through Facebook. The message to her son, she fears, is that life, all of life, is led on your phone. I am frantic, myself, about what life online is doing to us, to our relationships, <laughs> what it's doing to our relationships, what it's doing to our professions, what it's doing to our country. We leapt into this technology without even thinking. We gave away our privacy without a care. 
We didn't demand guard, guardrails or limits. And now, everything is hackable. Everything's on the internet. All our gadgets are on the internet. Our cars, our medical records, our bank accounts, everything except the president's tax returns. <laughs> but otherwise, everything. <laughs> Now, I have become a neurotic scold about this, and I have absolutely no idea how we, as a society, as a country, are going to solve what is now all of life. I think I worry about it so much because I'm a grandmother, and my girls are almost at the age when they will go on social media. And I am seriously frantic. Will they be bullied? How will they meet boys? And will they read books? I am so worked up about this that I have actually given serious thought to becoming an activist, kind of look like those mothers against drunk driving. I want to start a group called the Organization of Mothers Against Social Media. But then I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute, the acronym is orgasm. <laughs> So, Bill, wherever you are, I think I'm going to keep my day job. <laughs> uh, because I always did what my mother said, I read and ended up marrying a writer, Aaron Latham. And then I wrote a book, and it's called Becoming Grandma. And when I went on my book tour, what I did was I collected tasteless grandfather jokes. Now, I'm going to get back to that in one minute, but first, let me thank you so much, so much for this cherished Lizzie. I'm so proud of getting this award from this sensational organization. And I do want to thank all my friends and my colleagues from 60 Minutes for coming tonight. Now, back to the joke. Thank you. I thought that I was going to be the last speaker. I thought I was going to end this event completely and say good night and drive home safely. So, on that assumption, I wrote on the rubric that you should always leave them laughing, here's my favorite tasteless grandfather joke. <laughs> but I'm going to have to say, I guess, I'm going to tell you the most tasteless grandfather joke and then enjoy dinner. But I'm, I'm going to tell it to you, because we all need a good laugh. It has nothing to do with anything. So, Mel, Grandpa Mel, is coming up on his 80th birthday, and he is just miserable about this. He just whines all over the place. He's driving his friends crazy. His wife is going nuts. He kvetches about it morning, noon, and night. His friends get together, and they say, we have to do something very special for Mel on that day. Day arrives, Mel's home, there's a knock on the door. He opens, and there is the most gorgeous, statuesque, young, sexy, voluptuous girl, blonde. And she says, hi, Mel, I'm Susie, and your friend sent me to give you super sex. And Mel, long pause, he looks down, he looks up, and he says, I think I'll take the soup. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>